Okay, this is the first in an educational series done by the Quad Quack. Um, a lot of times when I'm flying out at the RC Flight Club, where people are flying fixed wing airplanes and other radio control models, uh, a lot of beginners come up and ask me, Hey, Doc, how does that quad rotor thing fly? That's probably the most common question I get asked. They want to know how the control surfaces work, how does it how does it turn, how does it go up, how does it go down. So this little short video is intended to be kind of a beginner's introduction into the uh, basic physics or dynamics of uh, quad rotor flight or any multi rotor for that matter of fact. But to keep it simple, we're going to use a quad rotor multi copter uh, in this example. So. The first thing that we want to make sure is that, uh, you know, we understand, I'm assuming that you understand the basics of thrust, lift, gravity, and uh, uh, drag. And all those same forces apply on a quad rotor. What we're going to concentrate on here is how the different motors interact to provide the, the control necessary uh, to make sure the quad rotor flies in a predictable and desired pattern. So for the purposes of the uh, demonstration here, the illustration, you'll notice that the uh, quad rotor is depicted by the green X here. Uh, on two ends of the X are yellow or whitish looking motors. Uh, those motors are rotating clockwise. And on the other two ends are the blue motors. And those motors are rotating counterclockwise. The yellow arrows at the end of each spoke represent the direction that the torque that's produced by that motor is trying to push the quad rotor or the quadcopter. The red arrows out at the end of each arrow indicate thrust or RPMs, either way you want to look at it. Uh, the more RPMs you have, the higher the thrust. In order for the quad rotor to hover, all of these forces must be perfectly in balance. In other words, the thrust must be sufficient enough to lift the quad rotor off the ground, but not too much that it causes it to continue climbing. Uh, the torque represented by the yellow arrows cancels out basically so that it doesn't pivot or yaw. And um, as I said, all four of the RPMs are consistent or roughly equivalent so you don't get any uh, pitch or roll action and also you get hover. So everything is in equilibrium and that way the quad rotor hovers. Now to climb or descend the quad rotor sounds pretty simple. You increase and or decrease the RPM of the uh, motors. Uh, to increase the altitude, increase the RPM on all four motors simultaneously. And to decrease altitude, you decrease the RPM on all four motors simultaneously. So, if you can imagine, on your uh, Mode 2 radio control system, that would be your left stick, your throttle. Pushing the throttle up would increase the RPM, pulling the throttle back, would decrease the RPM, which would result in the quad rotor climbing or descending. Or if you get it somewhere in the middle, it would end up being in a hover, as we discussed in the other slide. The next basic thing is pitch, which basically controls whether or not the quad rotor flies forward or flies backwards. To pitch the nose down and the rear of the quad rotor up, which would result in a pitch forward moment, you increase the RPM on the rear motors and or decrease the RPM on the front motors. And it's a little hard to see in the illustration here, but if you'll notice, the uh, red arrows on the rear of the uh, quad rotor uh, are, are larger than the ones on the front, which indicates there's more RPM in the rear. Uh, the little green arrow there right in the center is intended to show the direction of flight. Actually, the green arrow is showing where the front of the aircraft is. In this in illustration here, you're looking at a pitch aft maneuver. So in other words, this would be pulling the right stick on your control back towards you, which would increase the RPM on the front two motors and, and or decrease the RPM on the back two motors. 
Now the aircraft would still be pointing away from you, but it would move towards you or backwards. Next basic control maneuver is roll. Uh, you increase the RPM on one side or the other or decrease the RPM on the opposite side, uh, which would cause the, the quad rotor to uh, roll along its longitudinal axis. In this illustration, we've increased the RPM on the left two motors and slightly decreased it on the right two, which would cause the quad rotor to roll to the right. Now, you have to remember that since it's a quad rotor, even though the nose is still pointing in the direction of the green arrow, as it rolls to the right, this quad rotor is going to move to the right as well. Just the opposite of this illustration would give you a roll to the left. Now, probably the most complex thing for people to understand and beginners is, okay, on that left stick on my radio control, if I move the stick left and right on my airplane, that swings the rudder left and right and that controls which way the nose of the airplane points. Okay, well the stick essentially does the same thing except that instead of moving a rudder you once again control the RPM of opposing pairs of motors. Uh, in this case we want to uh, say for the illustration we want to yaw to the left or point to the nose to the left. Uh, what we need to do is to increase the torque on the, uh, I don't know if they're yellow or white motors at the ends of the stick there, which would cause the yellow torque error to increase. And that way the quadcopter would yaw to the left. And that's shown kind of graphically here. So we've increased the RPM on opposing pairs of motors, which also results in increasing the torque moment in that direction. So in this case, you would get a left-hand yaw. Now, just the reverse of that, we would get a yaw to the right. So you're probably thinking by now, well, you know, that sounds okay, but uh, if, if you've ever tried flying one of these little $50 micro quadcopters or something like that, uh, that doesn't have any advanced stabilization in it, you know you've got a handful uh, when you're trying to fly this thing just to make it hover. So a lot of the advanced uh, quad rotors and multi-rotor uh, systems use a flight control system, which is basically a little onboard computer that manages all those control inputs for you. Uh, and it, it coordinates all the actions of the motors to kind of uh, orchestrate the symphony, if you will, uh, to keep the thing flying straight and stable. What's great about it is it can make such minute corrections so quickly that uh, you know it would be hard for, for a human to do that. So a lot of them out of the box come with some basic stabilization algorithms built into them with uh, an accelerometer or things like that so that pretty much they're stable to fly right out of the box. Now these flight control systems also have the capability to add other sensors or other uh, devices to them. The most common one uh, that you see, of course, and, and is, is important is the radio control receiver. Now, what that does is it takes the signals that are transmitted by your mode two transmitter that you hold in your hand, receives them, and passes those as inputs to the flight control system. So that when you give it a pitch forward command with your right stick, the radio control receiver sends pitch forward information on the appropriate uh, channel to the flight control system. The flight control system interacts with that, looks at that and says, aha, I need to adjust the RPM on the back motors upwards and the front motors downwards. So that would result in a pitch forward. And of course all the other standard radio control uh, functions as well. Pitch, roll, and rudder and elevator. All, all would work the same thing. Now these flight control systems can really get out of hand. You can add a lot of extra add-ons to them. The most common one is a GPS sensor which provides location information to the flight control system. Uh, more importantly than that, uh, it, it provides information about where the 
quad rotor craft is in three-dimensional space. So it can feed information into it such as uh, coordinate information, map coordinate information, as well as altitude information. Uh, and the flight control system can monitor that and, like I said, make adjustments up to 600 times per second, which can result in very, very stable flight. You've probably seen the YouTube videos by now where somebody puts their quad rotor in GPS mode and puts it in hover and they can walk up and grab the skids and pull it away and let it go and it goes right back uh, to where it was. That's governed by a GPS system. Uh, other uh, sensors can include such things as uh, barometers or gyro compass or uh, you name it to help aid uh, the flight control system do its job. So that's pretty much the end. It's very, uh, very straightforward. I hope uh, that that wasn't too uh, fast, but I uh, wanted to give you a quick taste of what it was like and uh, watch my channel for more. Uh, hey, if, if you like this, come on, give me a thumbs up here and feel free to share this with others. And uh, that might encourage me to do some more. Thanks again.